Howdy, it's the beginning of May 2022. We're gonna start making some hammers for Timothy Dick. He's developed kind of a custom of cross peen design, a little bit more nuanced, pretty short, stubby proportions. 40 of them for now, and we're gonna try and get it done in this two week period out of train rail. So this time we're using 1912 train rail. Let me show you some of the rail that's scattered throughout the yard here over there. And then I also have some loose bits scattered over there. I'm just about to start up the Ingersoll Rand air compressor and we're gonna get the steam hammer going and start forging these billets. I turn my battery switch on. This doesn't have any glow plugs, but you press the start or this um, button here with your one hand and then the engine starter with the other. Then you let go of that and let it warm up. So outside of the front of the shop, you can see where we've already cut to the webbing out of one of the rails here. So these three are 1912 rails. Let's show you the date here. This is an Algoma section here, and the section that we're working on is also Algoma. You can see it's 85 pound rail. That means that every three feet, it weighs 85 pounds. Every three foot section weighs 85 pounds. Right there, 1912. Basically splits itself apart as you're cutting it. I used a plasma cutter to do this. We need to chip off uh, this slag and then we need to grind so that these edges are smooth. This is obviously the bottom of the rail, but you can imagine that being on the top. Let me take you in the shop and show you. Here's Samuel Corey working on it right now. So he has a section of the rail top in the vise. And you can see he's grinding the way at the uh, uh, at where the, the cracking was. So we've chipped that area off and he's grinding that so it's nice and smooth. Wanna say hi, Sam? Hi, Sam. Over here we got more rail cutting in the saw and the forge is on. We have one billet heating up. And now we gotta get the steam hammer ready to rock and roll. This has been warming up for about five minutes. Start the compressor, which is with this button there. You can see that gets our gauge way up there to 120 PSI. Open the valve a little bit. And we want to get a little bit of pressure in the system before I open that valve right up, just so that there's always back pressure against the compressor, because otherwise it'll spew a little bit more oil out than we want it to. So this is a 500 gallon propane tank that I'm using as a storage tank two inch hose. This is, a, this is rated for 250 PSI and obviously we're running at less than half of that. So it's, it has a very good safety factor on it. This is another vessel that I'd like to hook up as well for air storage. It's rated for 1480 PSI. So this is very solid. And you can see that it goes into the shop right there. So it's evening now. We were doing a few other things in the afternoon, but we're gonna do a little bit more work tonight. And so Samuel's gonna finish grinding the billets, or at least what we have of the billets. There I can show you. So you can see he's actually just working on this one now and following very slight, very hard to see, but a crack that's in there. He's just following on this billet a little bit farther down. You can see how it's ground down. And that's just the nature of the beast when you're using this uh, recycled steel. It's no longer safe to run the trains on it because it's fatigued, or sections of it are. So we need to make sure that we cut out all of those fatigued sections so that we have only the homogenous steel when we're making these hammers. Before I get forging though, I need to put some oil in the oiler here on the steam hammer. Let me tell you about that. So I'm using non-detergent 30 weight oil which is uh, pretty much the same type of oil that you would use on a self-contained air hammer. 
So that's the same oil that I use over there in the All Days and Onions hammer. You can see there, here there's a sight glass. It's very dark, but you can see that it's low. So we're just gonna pour a few glugs here in there and just fill that up. Some might ask, why a non-detergent oil? That's because the detergent in modern lubricants eats away at bronze and brass bushings. And so you could probably get away with it on the steam hammer lubricating the cylinder and the valve, but the rest of the steam hammer, the oiling points, there is bronze bearings that things ride on, like the in the valve gear. So that's very important to use this non-detergent oil on because we don't want to have that get eaten away. This wheel is still good. Still good? Yep. It's day two of working on the hammers. Let me show you what's going on right now. First of all, over here in the bandsaw, I have some steel cutting, a very shallow triangle there that I've welded to a scrap hammer and it's cutting so that I just get a little section off. And I have the other one sitting around here somewhere. Oh, I think the bandsaw just quit. Basically what happened there was the bandsaw blade just crossed over the line of being wore out. And if you look at it very carefully here, it you can see how it's bowed. It's, it's cupped this way, like that. So it caused it to bind up there in the cut. I was able to get the rest of it cut off. There's a little piece lying there, but now it's actually time to change that blade out. We have some hammer handles being roughed out over here by Samuel. He's doing a fantastic job of that. Those look really good. Samuel is over here on the workbench wiring up another grinder that we can set up with uh, buffing wheels and things of that nature on there. So nice heavy cord too. Oh, and someone just showed up. Always excitement here at the farm.
very successful. Well, we just finished up another day. <laughs> so basically in between the scenes that is kind of there, I got sick, I got delayed for a few days, and then I just powered through a few processes or a heat actually on the whole bit of hammers that you don't get to see. Maybe you'll get to see them next time. That just is kind of what happens when you're unprofessional. But let's take a look at what we've got. And those two rows and those two there, we have 40 hammers, 41 actually. So there's room for one error and there might be more than that in there and we'll have to cut some more track and do some more, but we'll see. There's been three heats on these so far, a billet, the punching and the drifting and the preforming at the peen and then forging the peen. And of course we get two hammers out of one billet. So that's a heat and a half on these so far, you could say. There's one more heat that's needed on all of them to do some refining, to finalize the eye size and then stamp them. Sam has been working very faithfully on uh, hammer handles. So let's take a look at that. There's a bunch there. There's a bunch in there. These ones have already cut the kerf in uh, for the handles. So let's take a look here at just a random one. So this is just the rough, roughed in, and then I'll fit each one up individually, of course, to the head. So over here, the last thing that happened today, the bandsaw broke. It actually bit the dust. This is a cast part. The guide there for the blade snapped good. If anyone has access to parts, this is a Carolina bandsaw, but there's lots of brand names this is you know pretty generic if if you're familiar with band saws of, of this size you know there's a bunch of these all made in the chinese factory and people put different names on them but this isn't one in particular is a carolina fabricated saw cast piece i'm gonna try and weld it but i i doubt that that'll hold properly we'll have to i don't know either fabricate a part or I'll have to buy a new saw um we'll see Anyways, that's about it for today. Good productive day. Other than a sickness, everything went pretty well. Here's a little panoramic of the shop there. And even Sam, we even get Sam. So, and the steam hammer. My goodness, what a great machine. It's just running great, so. On to the next one.